we go racing on one of the most beautiful, but also one of the trickiest tracks in this sport. And Webb has got himself a good start this time in the 17. He was way back in Moto 1. He rectifies that by getting out front early here in Moto 2. Well, that was the one thing he said in his interview. I need to get a better start. I cannot be that far back on the opening lap. And he does just that. Also, Cooper Webb, bad news for the 39 other riders. Got the 37 of Joey Savacci right behind him. Savacci is second in Moto 1, and he and Webb have had some battles this year. Whoa, look at that. Down Savacci. the inside. Holy Woo. He made it happen and opened the door, actually, as they slowed each other. The rookie, Austin Fortner, the 17-year-old, 10th in Moto 1. That, says, you're going to bump into each other, I'll just go right by. That was uh, an attempt of intimidation, oh, in my and opinion. and Webb pays him back and stops him, and now we've got trouble everywhere. They're down all over the place. It's that time of the season. It's getting chippy out there. It's getting chippy, and Trying that's what happened. Trying to see who got knocked down to the left. That's one of Webb's teammates. It might have been Harrison. It looks like... Uh, Unbelievable. So Webb tried to even the score in a corner. There's not much room, and he just stopped, and there was nowhere to go. No, that is Jeremy Martin, your Whoa. defending series champion, who got collected fourth in the first race. Martin was trying to climb his way back into this championship. A disaster for him. That was incidental contact. He was not part of that, but got tagged as the bike started basically the domino effect of all going down. It is all sorts of shaking up. Austin Fort during the lead. Martin Davalos here on the 49 is second. Yeah, you can see how difficult it is through the trees there with the shadows. Faulkner had a miserable start the first moto, but look at this, this is not usually the first lap we're used to seeing a lot of new names with different guys up the front there. You see second place, Davalos, Jesse Nelson, welcome back to racing in third, Oldenburg fourth, Alex Martin, moto one winner in fifth, Osborne sixth, Cincerello, Hill, Cunningham, good start for him, and then Placidia running out the top ten. As we wait and see, there's Webb, he is now 20th, one point paying position. Plenty of time to make some moves, but Jason, that right there, I think Savachi came in, made a statement move. Uh, Webb obviously did not like that. Brake checked him and, uh, yeah, let the shenanigans begin. Yeah, and you never know in this 250 class. These are the young riders, and sometimes emotions get the better of them. Savachi not too far behind Webb. Webb is 20th, Savachi is 22nd. As Webb's trying to make the move right now on Jimmy Albertson using all kinds of creative lines here using outsides where no one has gone just to make passes and he's made two of them in one corner and he's got to run because Savachi's back there as well I'm sure Savachi would like to get some revenge meanwhile Austin Fortner the rookie oh! running away oh Jesse Nelson Ooh. almost over the front he didn't expect that kicker neither yeah. did I actually <laughs> clearly Whoa. but he has still secured second place from Davalos Ah, just the way he drew it up. Yeah, his heart rate just went <laughs> off the Richter scale right there. <laughs> Davalos going to try to get it back at the inside of this corner. This is where lines come Ooh. together. We saw exactly what happened the previous lap with Webb and Savachi. Davalos able to get through, but well, they didn't go down. Meanwhile, poor Jeremy Martin, who was not part of that with Webb and Savachi. He just got collected as everyone started going down. And I'm not sure he's going to be able to get back into this race. He, he, he almost looked like he got hurt, like maybe someone rode over him. He was right. holding his back. Yep. And uh, we know Jeremy Martin, he's tough as nails. He, if he can get up, he will get up. Cincerello. Oh, the 44. Yeah, Cincerello is pretty strong in Moto 1. He has made the move at the 42 of Oldenburg, so he is up to fifth. Well, with Webb and Savachi knocking each other down and Jeremy Martin maybe out of this one, the door is open for somebody to take maybe an upset moto win, maybe an upset overall win. The only one of the guys that has been up front in most of the races this year that's still there is Alex Martin, who is in fourth. Everyone else, this is a golden opportunity. Hey, didn't we say we wouldn't be surprised if Faulkner won before mm -hmm. the end of the season? He'd be in second overall right now, so if anything happens to Martin, we might just be uh, getting our predictions correct. All right, we're watching for the 17 of Webb. He'll be easy to spot. He's on the right side. He's got the red number plate background. He's your series leader. Trying to make the move on Colt Nichols. He's on that number 69. Up. The number 17 is in 17th, but also moving through the pack pretty quickly. A lot of guys right in front of him. This is where you just got to take a page out of Ken Roxon's book from last week and just slice and dice. You cannot afford to get held up. He does right there through be between two riders. Well, one, now two. Ooh, makes the move on Nichols. And I got to remind you again, he is going where no motorcycle has gone today, off of the main race line to just try to find an opening. Next rider on his list, the 31, RJ Hampshire and the Geico Honda. Webb's got him on the inside. 
He's, he's got a left-hander coming up. Yeah, he tried to get him there, but not able to make it happen right there. Hampshire got a good drive out of that turn. Now they're coming up on... Oh, he got Hampshire, and then Moseman goes right by him. He is taking two and three riders at a time. That should move him into 13th place now, after they were about last in a 40-rider field. Cooper Webb, what a comeback right now. Yeah, I'm sure he's got, uh, I'm sure he's a little ticked off at that pass right in this corner from Savachi. But like I said, I think Savachi came in, he did nothing wrong except running in real deep. But it's that point in the season where you got to dig deep. And I think Savachi thought, hey, I've got to rattle his cage, put the bike in, fluster him. Well, did it work? Maybe yes, maybe no. But they're both further in the pack. But these situations often breed into more crashes or more controversy whether it be this moto moving forward. So I don't think we've seen the end of it. <laughs> yeah, that is true. First of all, these guys are working their way through traffic, which is always a dangerous situation. And uh, second of all, you said emotions are going to be running high between the two of them. Taking advantage of all of it, Austin Fortner, the professional rookie, turned pro in our opening round back in May. He's been very good this year, a couple of top three finishes. But this could be the day where he gets his first ever moto win. But Martin Davalos, the veteran, 49, see that white rock star energy Husqvarna not too far back. Fortner yeah. out of Missouri, does his training down in Oklahoma with a lot of veteran riders, and he we have noticed that all year long. He rides like a rider much older than his 17 years of age would indicate. Yeah, he's very mature for his age. I, I feel like he's been a kid that kind of had good advice and almost been groomed from a young age. What to expect when you get to the pros, what it's like, how to handle it. Um, Georgia, you got some more about the 214? Yes, and like you were just saying, a rookie, it's really easy for them to kind of just put the hammer down and make easy mistakes. However, Austin Fortner, like you were saying, he rides much older than his age. His mechanic, Ollie Stone, actually said he's 17 going on 27. Yes, Martin Davalos right now is closing up, but he definitely has the fitness to go the full mile on this race. Third place, Jesse Nelson starting to get into this battle as well. Nelson has not raced in about two months after a knee injury. Said he's been riding for a week. Came back to racing. And what a ride here on the lucky number 13, the Troy Lee Designs KTM. Yeah, great ride. Um, when Davalos got around him early, I thought, okay, um, you know, he'll probably just try and settle. But then once the last couple laps, I feel like Nelson's really just found his groove and his rhythm. And he's been right there. And in fact, he's actually made a little bit of ground on Faulkner in the last lap or two. And what's interesting, we mentioned Alex Martin is the only one of the riders that's been in front in most of the motos this year that's in the hunt in this particular moto because of all those crashes early. They have pulled away a bit from him. So it's not just good fortune. These three are on the pace. They are running away from your first moto winner. Alex Martin is now 6.2 seconds behind your leader. And Faulkner's still looking around, trying to figure out who's going to challenge him. It's Davalos. Yeah, he's got to he's got to just not worry about what's happening around him. Uh, I know that's easier said than done. He's probably trying to figure out who it is, what's going on. But he, uh, this kid's got the pace. He's just got to keep his head forward and try run clean, solid laps. So the top three are close to this whoop section near the finish. Faulkner leading. Here's how he got it. Took advantage of these two running into each other. Webb and, and Savachi, and they bump into Jeremy Martin and a whole bunch of other riders knocked off the track and going down as well. Action's pretty hot, though, on the track. Austin Fortner on the 214, leading Martin Davalos. So you've got a rookie only three months into his professional racing career against Davalos, who's one of the veterans. Neither one of them have ever won one of these motos in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Now, the opportunity is there because fisticuffs early in this race between Joey Savacci and Cooper Webb, who are guys battling for the championship, running into each other, crashing, coming from behind. I don't think Forkner or Davalos cares about that one bit. They're just saying, hey, we'll take moto wins any way we can get them. No, they do care. They like that. They want no, more they, of that. Yeah, the They're like, hey, way, guys, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do that more. Faulkner's <laughs> going to go tell Sabacho of the race. Did you hear what Webb said about you? Take him out, run him down next time. Yeah, that really helped me out. Davalos, great run for him. He's had an up and down season. I'm going to sound like Faulkner's dad right now. Stop looking back. Look forward. <laughs> you know who's there. It's the 49. Don't worry. If you hear another bike, it just means pick up the pace. Focus on your race. Oh. 
Starting to get a little bit rattled, it looks like Faulkner looking a little uncomfortable at times. When I say a little uncomfortable, he's trying, he's on the ragged edge, but he's making, in my opinion, a few unnecessary mistakes, and I think that's just the, uh, call it the excitement or the adrenaline of leading a outdoor national, especially for a 17-year-old. Long way to go, see the countdown clock, top right side of the screen, 17 minutes, and then we'll take the two laps to go sign out. So basically get around about 35 minutes, which is a long time on a dirt bike, considering the physical exertion these guys have to put out. There's Alex Martin in the 26, Yamalu Star Racing Yamaha out of Minnesota, won the first moto today. Fourth in this one would be good enough to win the overall when we combine both races, partially because of the inconsistency of everyone else. And the way he rode in Moto 1, the way he's ridden pretty much all year, he has been lightning quick. He's yeah. not quite turned it on in the same pattern in this moto. I feel like if you, if, if you could turn back time with the same riding and maybe a bit more luck, he'd probably have potentially 50 more points, if not more. I mean, yes. he could be a points leader, but between a mechanical and some silly crashes in his out front, which I'm glad he did not make that mistake the first moto under pressure. Forkner has stretched it back a little bit on Davalos, and Georgia has Forkner's mechanic. Yes, Ollie Stone, he has been working with Austin Faulkner for over a year now. Uh, how nervous does it make you seeing Austin out there leading? I should say I'm terrified, but he he's won a few races before, obviously not professional, but he, he is such a good amateur and, and he dominates so much amateurs. It's, hopefully I'm trying to remind him that it's just a normal race, just like in the amateurs. Just, just, just try and keep him relaxed and hopefully he can win. Best of luck. Thanks, Ollie. And he's actually pulled away a bit. Again, every time we see he and Davalos, the gap a little bit bigger. Davalos' best finish this year, he has one fifth place and a pair of seventh place finishes in the motos. As dumb as this may sound, Faulkner looking over and seeing Davalos probably made him feel a little more comfortable than seeing Webb or, um, you know, Martin or someone like that. And that's no disrespect to Davalos, but if we're talking results and pace, um, it's a little bit different. And I think maybe you realize, wait a second, it's Davalos and Nelson, like, I should beat these guys anyway. Because all of a sudden, he's smoothed it out, he's not looking back, and he's putting a little distance. Hey, he might be right, but Davalos has a teammate, Zach Osborne, who's been very good this year. So maybe he thought that was him. Seems to have taken the pressure off, and he's rolling. The Universal. Multnomah Falls, not far from the track here in Washougal, Washington. Going to catch some battles in the middle of the pack here. You've got a pair of Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki teammates. The 44, the 66, Adam Cincerillo on 44. Arno Tonis, the Swiss native, trying to get him. And these two have been making some mistakes while battling each other. So the 42 of Mitch Oldenburg is getting in it. We're halfway through this race, 15 minutes down, 15 minutes to go. So I can remind you, in 15 minutes, you can save 15% or more on your insurance with GEICO. Here's the mechanic for Cincerillo saying, focus forward. Don't think about the guys behind you. Follow your lines. Yeah. Easier said than done. Yeah, it's always easier said than done. <laughs> I've dealt with that, you know. Dad yelling at me like, why don't you listen? I'm like, <laughs> it's like saying, go fast, you know. Oh, okay, I'm trying, you know, like I really am. Don't get me wrong. I didn't come here to sandbag, like I'm giving it everything I've got. But I think with someone like Tonus, he probably feels comfortable on this track and from racing the Grand Prix over in Europe, I kid you not, this looks like it could be a track in Switzerland, up in the mountains. I mean, it's very similar looking and the feel and the traction. And any times you're in the mountains, you get that uh, shale base and the you know a lot of rocks. Oldenburg starting to get into this one now. Rough weekend for Oldenburg. Started up front in the motos last week in Minnesota and finished outside of the top 10. Uh-oh, they're all about to deal with the 17 of Cooper Webb, who has worked his way from the back toward the front. Oldenburg is 10th. This is Cooper Webb, your series leader in 11th. Took a very calculated risk by basically stopping on the track of brake check to impede the progress of his rival, Joey Savacci. That put him way back, but he has clawed forward. Well, I don't know if it was a calculated risk with Cooper Webb. It was a statement. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's a statement kind of guy. Um, I'm, I was a little bit like that as a racer, and uh, call it had an attitude on the bike. And uh, Webb didn't like that move from Savachi. And, you know, when you're racing and someone runs it in, it almost runs you off the track, and your adrenaline's going, it gets you fired up. And he just basically said, hey, this is not going to happen, buddy. Yeah. I'm going to stuff you, park you right here. And, I mean, after that, we saw what happened. <laughs> yeah, and what has happened here is he took his chances. The 
I set myself in the back and him too. I'll bet on myself to get through traffic exactly. quicker than him. And, and guess worked. what? Guess yep. what? They they actually got re-going almost, you know, head to toe type deal, one after the other, but now Wet's in eleventh and Savachi's fifteenth. So we're making better progress through the pack. Since Rulo's still trying to hold on with Tonus all over him. In front of them, you got Aaron Plessinger seventh. Justin Hill, great ride in his comeback. Haven't raced since hasn't raced since round three. So six races off. This is Hill's home race. He is sixth. Zach Osborne fifth. Alex Martin just quietly circulating in fourth, trying to lock down what would be his second overall win of the year. Jesse Nelson is third, and Martin Davalos is only 1.2 seconds behind Austin Forkner. Uh-oh. Yellow flag. Is that for Lapa? or is that... Uh... Oh, it looks like someone just got going. Good battle between these three and now four riders as Webb is getting into it. Oldenburg, look at the top of his helmet. You can see the GoPro. More shakeups in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Zach Osborne, who was running in a solid fifth in this moto and is also fifth in his series standings bike problems his race is over alex martin goes from fifth to fourth with that and now takes third away from jesse nelson well done wow curious what happened with osborne um doesn't appear to be injured i'm wondering if it was uh, mechanical nice to see the troy lee guys actually helping him push the bike <laughs> off the track nelson on the 13 gonna try to get martin back martin was just circulating back there for most of the race he's putting in a charge late now, he won the first moto, and the other riders who he's battling with there have had a bad race here. So it appears that Alex on that 26, Yamaluk Star Racing Yamaha, will be today's overall winner. But uh, you do pay championship points in each individual moto, so he just picked up a few more for making the pass on Nelson. Nelson, though, a great comeback, though a big mistake there. Nelson's only been back on the bike for a week after a knee injury, going back at uh, around high point which would have been about two months ago. So excellent job on the 13, staying inside the top five here. I don't, I mean, I can't believe that he's been on the bike for a week because to be this strong for both motos, I'm not sure, uh, <laughs> not, not calling him out on it, but I'm just saying, man, it's hard to believe. But watch this, he leaves the door open, Martin just carries a ton of speed. Almost like Nelson thought, you know what, he's gonna get me eventually. Instead of trying to hold us both up and protect lines, not let him by, but open the door, let him go through, and then tag in and go with him. Martin is still down eight and a half seconds on your leader, Forkner, who has 1.8 seconds on Davalo. So I don't know if there's time left. Martin appears to have ramped it up here in the late stages. Can he go after them and try to win both motos today? We're going to try to check in now with Cooper Webb, your series leader, who's coming from the back. Nelson is fourth. And also a great job by his teammate, who you're going to see here next. Now fifth place rider. As a lap rider, the 203 of Commons. The 36 is Justin Hill. First race back from injury. He's fifth. Six is Plessinger right behind him on that blue 23. Then the battle between the teammates we were watching earlier. That was Cincerillo and Tonus coming through. Cincerillo on 44. Stretched it just a little bit on Tonus. Oh, and you know what that means. Oh, there we go. He has been a victim of the shark attack. Sharks in the water, the blue 17, Cooper Webb, just keeps chewing the competition up after that big melee at the beginning of the race, set him back, he has worked his way forward, Webb, that is going to be eighth place. Check back in with Austin Forkner, 1.9 seconds is the gap between he and Martin Davalos. Yeah, he definitely looks like he's kind of ironed it out, smoothed his riding out. Um, he looked a little, not erratic, but just, you know, a little all over the place, a little nervous up front. Now he looks like a confident leader. And even though he's 17 with the maturity of a 27-year-old, the first time you really experience that, it is, it is tough to mentally overcome it. But I think because he's been leading for so long, he now kind of knows he's got this one. I mean, look, he's actually pulled it. Nice little gap. Yeah, it was. Oh, there must have been a mistake because Alex Martin has now taken over second. What has happened to Davalos? So that's going to shake it up even more as Austin Forkner is trying to win his first ever moto. So Austin Forkner, 17 years old, three months into a professional racing career, is looking to take his first ever moto win in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Now we count both motos today toward an overall winner for the weekend, and that should be Alex Martin as the two laps to go sign comes out. And Alex here on the blue 26 should be your overall winner. He won the first moto, he's second here. Forkner would have a 10th 
from earlier and a first in his second moto. That'll give Fortner second overall. And Cooper Webb, we're waiting on him. 23 of Aaron Plessinger coming through. He is fifth. And we'll see, it was Adam Cincerello next, or was Webb able to pick off another rider? We'll see in just a moment. It's Plessinger, big tall kid out of Ohio, teammate of Webb. That team has just had a great season. Yamaloop Star Racing Yamaha, they've definitely got something special under the hood of those bikes. And yes, Webb has made the move on Cincerello. So that will move Webb into sixth. It should be good enough for third overall today when we count both motos. And if he makes one more pass, he'll end up second overall after a third of the first moto. If he can get his uh, teammate Plessinger for fifth here. Wow, what a shakeup. And Joey Savacci went for it. There's no doubt about that in the first lap. A very aggressive pass on Webb. Webb immediately paid him back. And Savacci has come through pretty well also, but it's 11th place for him. While Webb has climbed to sixth. Yeah, Webb was just a little more aggressive, had a little more intensity, and made those passes a little quicker. So you started seeing it almost a little bit like in the 450s when we see sometimes Webb a little more like Roxon making short work of the competition. And we saw Savachi trying to get through and go with him. Because I kind of feel like Savachi was heated and wanted to go after Webb again, but not quite able to get anywhere close. Uh, you're playing Webb's game, though, when you're in those situations. I mean, this is a guy that motivates himself in all sorts of ways. So if you're going to start it, uh, he's not going to back down from a challenge. And uh, we'll see, though, if it spills over as we see Savachi now, maybe in the next three races before we end this season. Savachi can try to take the measure of him and get him one back. As you see the 37 up to 11 on the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki. So that is a good comeback considering how far back they were. They were outside of the top 30. But uh, Webb just a step even better moving further forward. And Tavachi had said, after last week's race in Minnesota, he knew today was the day. He had to try to make up points in the championship starting now or it was going to be too late. Yeah. He definitely threw it in there. Oh, absolutely. Last lap, Austin Forkner on the 214, looking for his first career moto victory. So much hype about this kid coming from the amateur ranks. There was a big bidding war. Kawasaki had this kid riding their bikes since his younger days, but all the brands wanted a piece of him. Cowie said, we're rebuilding our program. We're not letting him go anywhere. But you never know. Sometimes these phenoms, it works out brilliantly right from the start. Sometimes they struggle and eventually get it together. Sometimes, Sometimes they don't work out yes, at all. Like any other sport. Sometimes it just never comes together. He has been rock solid since the opening round of this season at Hangtown. Hasn't always been spectacular, but more steady and solid. Two top three finishes in the motos so far this year, and now going for number one. But he's done it the right way. He didn't come out and you know, make enemies and crash and, and get injured. He's just slowly built and built. And each week we said, it, he's gonna have that break, break breakthrough ride. He's not gonna get the overall today, but a moto win, I think is fantastic, especially for a 17 year old kid. Like you said, Jason, he's only been a professional for three months. So, yeah. But it seems like he's been a professional for a decade. Um, very smart kid, great family support around him, great team, obviously great guidance. Listen to the fans saluting this. I of think they know, comes. yeah, you're, you're seeing what will probably be the first of many when a rider with this kind of height, this kind of talent and potential goes out and shows you that he can handle the pressure of being a pro, the longer races, the rougher tracks. A lot of times these kids come in with a full head of steam and their best races are the first race two yeah. or three they come in. They're all they're fired so up. focused on that one event and then yeah. they almost, you know, as we said, shoot the bolt, you know, they don't have much left in the tank later he, on in the season. Yeah, he's actually gotten faster, stronger, better, little bit every single week, and it's going to culminate with a moto win. Uh, yeah, some of the riders in front of him took each other out, but he's putting himself in position to take advantage. Hey, as I would say if I was him, don't make your problems my problems. I won the race, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he doesn't care one bit about that now. The bottom line is this. Austin Fortner living up to the hype. The 17-year-old from Missouri has got his first career moto win in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. <laughs> you think he's pumped? Overall win going to go to Alex Martin with a first and a second on the day. Second career victory, second of the year for Amart, the veteran out of Minnesota. Ah, it got away from him last week at his home race with crashes at the worst moments when he was leading both motos. Threw it away. Way to bounce back seven days later.
and put it together. Everybody else made the mistakes today. He kept it on two wheels under pressure the whole time. So congrats to Alex Martin, your overall winner, but Austin Fortner might be happier than him. He's finally got a moto win. That was unbelievable, but it was the 26 who took the overall win here today. You got your first moto win of the season. You're taking the overall. Are you happy with that? And obviously managing to miss all the chaos in the first lap. Yeah, there was a lot happening there. Um, it just kind of seems like a blur now thinking about it. Um, but I was fortunate to, to get out as good as I was. I kind of bobbled off the start there and was way back. And then with the chaos, I kind of went through everyone. And um, for sure, that roost hurts. Um, going up, it was nice to get the whole shot in that first moto. But second moto, I had to just eat it all the way up horsepower hill. And that was definitely uh, not enjoyable. But uh, it's great to get the overall win. I don't know what happened to to Davalos. I never saw if he went down or I don't know. I just knew it was second. So um, for sure, great to get the overall and I just can't thank everyone enough. Uh, Star Racing, Yamaha, Yamalube, Rockstar, Thor, Bell, 100%, Garnet, C-Tab Races, uh, Swanepoel, Chad Schweitzer, Todd Jackson. It's been a good summer. Let's keep it going. I'm looking forward to this break and, and having a little uh, downtime before we get back to the East Coast. Congratulations, Alex Martin, taking the overall in the 250 class. Is your overall winner. So Fortner has career moto win. Number one, Jesse Nelson. What a right, comeback right, to yeah. racing. As Justin race. Hill. Yeah, same thing. Both of the Troy Lee Designs KTM teammates back for the All first the time bird. in a while. So three of them up there. Yep. Good job, Kyle Cunningham. Top 10. Yeah, on the Suzuki. Good job, Savachi. That's a great comeback in its own right from outside the top 30 to 11th. But Webb, just a little bit quicker. Let's go back to Georgia. Yes, I think this is a day, Austin, that you are never, ever going to forget. It's your first ever professional race moto win. Just tell me how you feel. Oh, I'm, I'm so pumped right now. Like, I, uh, I got a pretty good start. I got a horrible start. The first moto had to come through the pack. Uh, I knew I was riding good, though, so I just I needed a start. And second moto, I got a good start. And then uh, the guys uh, all got... They uh, all hit or something in the back, and I, I went in and, and uh, passed into the lead, and then um, they ended up all falling in that S turn or something. So um, I, I kind of just broke away, and I was waiting for that two board, that two board so so bad, like late in the moto. Um, track's really rough, but um, I'm, I'm so pumped right now. Huge congratulations, Austin Faulkner. Will remember this day for the rest of his life, I'm sure. Absolutely, Georgia. Yeah, you got to think that might be the first of many. And the, despite the 10th in the first moto, he gets second overall for the day. There's so much chaos for everyone else. Cooper Webb, well, he did one thing. He actually extended his points lead uh, after a rough moto for some of his competitors. Jeremy Martin, by the way, did salvage 17th in this second moto. Let's go back to Georgia. Yes, it looks like Cooper Webb has a bit of a swollen lip. That was a crazy moto. Uh, lots of chaos. However, you powered through. Uh, how are you feeling? Oh, yeah, it was definitely tough. It was a wild race, to say the least. And uh, at the end of the day, it was actually pretty fun. Um, you know, I never thought that would have happened. So it's bar banging, and, uh, you know, I ain't going to take, take it. So, uh, you know, it was fun. Come from the back, made some good passes, and just got up as much as I could. You know, we we're still pretty far back. But, you know, I think we were, all three of us were down for a while and got up pretty far back. So... You know, it is what it is, and that tight corner was a little weird, a little off balance and everything, so. Hey, I'm, I'm up on the podium. I, I got some more points, so I'm stoked. And just want to thank Lord Jesus Christ, Mom and Dad, the whole Star Race and Yamaha, Yama Loop team. They all work so hard. Um, Gareth Swanepoel, Eric Gass, my mechanic. Rockstar Energy, Thor, Parts Unlimited, 100%, Toyota Escondido. And just all you fans, thanks for uh, the encouragement, and heading to the break. Congratulations, Cooper Webb. Reach. See Nelson, you know, just jump on the bike, ride a little bit, come to a race and uh, get third. Uh, how do you feel? I mean, you must feel very confident now getting ready for the two weeks off. Yeah, six weeks off the bike and off the bike and five days on the bike. So it was, uh, I felt great. And then um, just did, my stamina really wasn't there, but uh, we decided I was going fast. Might as well just try to go race and just build up because we have a three week break and now we're going to head into Unadilla. So hopefully I have some momentum going into there. But uh, yeah, I really wasn't supposed to race and just last minute decided to. So it was good. Well, I bet you're glad. Congratulations. Well done, Jesse Nelson.